Hey, good morning. Merry Christmas to you this morning, man. Can you believe it's only a week away? I mean, as a kid, I mean, you know, as a kid, you look forward to this thing all year long, and now it's only a week away, and school breaks there. It's absolutely awesome. Matthew, if you could help me out and just go back to that one slide, because we're going to talk about that. Um, but while, oh man, he's so fast. I got to tell you this. My Bible, um, I know you can't see because it it's camo, but um, <laughs> it, like your Bible may have like that fun, like little thing that comes down the middle and you can mark your page. Well, mine didn't come with that. Um, or if it did, it's camo and I can't find it. So here's my Bible marker, man. I was just looking at this and uh, it's in here for a reason. Uh, and this is what will choke me up, but this will get me to. It just said, my kid wrote me a note, man. Isn't this cool? It says, Dad, I love you. And, uh, and then on the flip side, it says, God loves you too. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's cool. All right, all right. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to cry any, or at least I'm not going to try to. Um, so we just sing this song, like, bless the Lord, O my soul. And there's this powerful moment in the song. Um, the lyrics are absolutely powerful, and I just want to look at that for just a quick second. Because it, it, it deals kind of with where we're heading. It says, on that day when my strength is failing, and the end draws near, and my time has come, still my soul sing your praise unending, 10,000 years and then forevermore. That doesn't just happen. Like that's not, you're not just going to get to that moment and we don't know when that moment is. It could be five minutes from now. It could be five years from now. It could be 50 years from now. But like that doesn't just happen. A really intentional life, one that has been given in pursuit and knows the, knows the glory and the majesty and the relationship with God, that life can say that praise. And if we're not able to say it on that day, I pray that those surrounding us would be able to say it on that day. So we're getting ready to close up our series on David. Like we're going to wrap this thing up today. And leading up to this weekend, I was really wrestling, like, God, like, how, you know, there's so much we talked about with David, like, God, how do you want me to wrap this thing up? Like, what is there that we could say? Like, what is there that, that we could share that would really just surmise and wrap up and tie together his life? And so today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this one passage, and it's going to sum up his life. Okay, this is one sentence, you can, you can sum this thing up. And I'm going to show you something today. It's something that David wanted the most. And we talked last week, and you need to know that David wasn't perfect at pursuing this. But he would always come back to this thing because it's what he wanted the most. Like, and when I say that, it wasn't like he wanted this the most for a season. Like David the shepherd wanted this the most. David the warrior wanted this the most. David, the fugitive, the guy on the run, he wanted this the most. And even when he made it to the palace, even when he had all the trappings of being a king, David wanted this thing the most. And that's why I thought, you know, this is a great way to conclude our series on David because it just really highlights the goodness of God and it reveals what David wanted the most. And, um, so I thought what I would do is I would start by just our time together by asking you a really simple question. What is it that you want the most? What is it that you want the most? And as your mind begins to flip through the Rolodex, what I don't want you to answer is what do I want the most right now? Because that is inherently different from what you want the most. Like right now, you may be going through a season of life like that isn't good. Like you might have a disease. Like you might be battling some type of illness. And you would say, what I want the most is I want this disease gone. Yeah, but that's what you want the most right now. Like if, if that was gone, you'd be on to something else. That's different than what you want the most. Like what you want the most is stronger than that. It's bigger than that. It's grander than that. Like what you want the most changes from minute to minute. Like right now you could say, you know what, I, I'd really like a spouse. That's what I want the most. No, that's what you want the most right now. But what is it that you want the most? Here's one of the things I've always admired about David. Is even though his circumstances changed changed, even though his seasons of life would change, what he wanted the most never did. 
What he wanted the most never did. And what he wanted the most was so much bigger. It was so much better. It was so much grander. It was so much more satisfying. It was so much more rewarding. It was so much more eternal that he was willing to endure hardships. He was willing to sacrifice in order to have this. And isn't that true when there's something out there that we want the most? We're willing to sacrifice for it because the temporary hardships outweigh the glory of what it is that we want the most. So, after sharing what it is with you that David wanted the most, my hope, my prayer, my belief is you're going to want this the most too. So what is it? What is it that David wanted the most? Turn in your Bibles with me to Psalms chapter 27. Don't put it up on the screen yet. Hopefully. Okay, cool. Because in one sentence, David is going to package what he wanted the most. This beautiful sentence. Are you guys ready? Are you guys there? If you don't have your Bibles, man, you can flip open your... um, you can flip open your U version on your phone. And I will tell you, we'll have the passage on the screen, but there's something about being able to hold God's word and to be able to hold it in your hands with a pen and write notes in the margins and what it means to you. There's something about that. So don't just always rely on us. Make sure you guys have your own Bible and uh, your own avenue into God's word because this is only one day out of the whole week and there's plenty to enjoy uh, in God's word. Here we go. This is what David wanted the most. Psalm 27, verse 4. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek the, that freaked me out. (laughs) The thing I seek the what? Okay, you guys, um, I know it's been a crazy weekend. Like I know the weather, like you guys responded like the most, like you just survived getting to church. Like your truck and your car slid everywhere, but you're not in motion right now and you're happy to be there. I need us to say it like we mean it. Or like we understand what he's saying. The thing I seek the, there we go. That was the best from Saturday night, nine o'clock. All right, way to go, good job. Okay, man, if you're online, give yourself a hand. That was great, we heard you. The thing I seek the most is to live in the house of the Lord, what? All the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating his temple. The one thing I ask of the Lord, it's the thing I seek the most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. What is it that David wanted the most? David wanted to be like where God is. He wanted to be where God is is the thing that he wanted the most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of his life. Now that's good, it's desirable, it's an admirable, admirable, but here's the thing that I really want to look at. Like here's the question that we ought to be asking ourselves. Why did David want that the most? Like he didn't just put that down. There's a reason he wanted that the most. Like why did David want that more than he wanted anything else? What was it? So here it is. David wanted that the most because he knew God. David wanted that the most because he knew God. There is a world of difference between knowing who God is and knowing God. Knowing who God is will not necessarily change your life, but knowing who, like knowing God himself, experiencing God, that will change what you want the most. You see, from going all the way back to the shepherd's field, David knew God. To the time he was a warrior and a refugee, David knew God. He knew his goodness. He knew his faithfulness. He knew his love. And therefore, that was like what steered what he wanted the most because knowing God was better than anything else he could possibly ever have. It was better than anything else imaginable that he could that he could possibly ever possess David knew God you see David had heard how God loves people but more than that David knew that God loved him 
You see, David knew that God would protect his people. He had over a thousand years worth of history to know how God was for his people. But more than that, David knew that God had watched over his life. He was able to reflect on his own life and say, you know what, God, I remember how you protected your people there. But there's something different. Because the same protection that you gave your people there, I experience in my own life. And you are good. You see, David had a thousand years of history to review and to look upon and how God provided for his people, that he was provision for his people. But as David reflect on the glory of God, on the goodness of God, there was something different for him. Like he knew it. He had experienced it. He had experienced experienced the provision of God. Like when man, when he was out there with Goliath, when he was in the shepherd's field, when he was running from his life from Saul, God was with him. And man, he wanted that. He knew God. And so why did David, why on earth would David want God want to dwell in the house of the Lord more than anything else? Because beyond knowing about who God was, David actually knew him. And here's the crazy thing. Is our world Our world is full of people who know about God. Our country is full of people who will invoke the name of God. But rare is the person in today's world who knows him. Rare is the person who really knows him. I would dare venture that even this morning... There are people who have gathered here today who know who God is but are desperately seeking more of God in their life. And if you find yourself in that season, I would say if all we ever possessed of God is knowledge of him, then what David wants the most was probably going to sound crazy to you. Like if, like if all, all we have of God is the knowledge that we, that we possess of him, then what David wants the most probably sounds fanatical to you. It probably sounds out of reach. It probably sounds out of touch. It probably sounds like it's not even possible. But I want to tell you something. It is possible To know God the way David knew God. When I asked the question this morning, what do you want the most? If it was difficult for you to answer that question, or if what David wanted the most did not come pouring out of you, or even now, is if when I say like what David wanted the most sounds crazy to you, fanatical to you, like if your heart's not, if your mind, if your soul's not engaging in this, then I would dare say that we have focused too much attention on learning about him and enjoying learning about him. Listen, learning and enjoying, learning about God is enjoyable. But if that's all you ever did, there's a critical step that you're missing. Because, man, to know him is even better than to know about him. When you can plug what you know about him and see the reality of him in your life, that is mind-blowing. See, that's going to change what you want the most. And if we're not there yet, then I dare say we're too busy. Like, we've got too much going on in our lives. Like, like we're pursuing too many other things. We've made something other than or someone else other than God the focal point of our living. And he's just become something we've added to all of our other pursuits. In today's world, in the country that we live in, there is a temptation to just add God to all the other things. I mean, you think about our lives, like what are we chasing, man? I mean, people are chasing success, people are chasing money, people are chasing recognition, people are chasing relationships. And there is a temptation to just add God to all the other things that we're chasing. And to chase after those things with the same fervency or the same intensity is what we think we should be chasing God with. Let me just call it for what it is. That's idolatry. And 
Now, if you're brand new, and if you haven't pursued God very long, this may be new for you. But for those of us who have pursued God for a whole long, for a long time, and we're reflecting, like, what is it that I want the most? Like, is it God? Is it these things? How am I evaluating? How am I living my life? How did it go for God's children when they pursued idolatry? You see, God was so good to them the way he has been to us. He was so good to the children of Israel that they dared think that some of this stuff was what they had done and they had earned it. And they, they're like, hey, this is awesome. And they began to fall in love with things other than God. Even David, if you look at David's life, David would stumble. But he would always come back to idolatry is a big deal. Church, I want to talk about this for just a second. You guys, we are just one mistake away. One mistake away from really screwing things up. If you're a grandma, if you're a grandpa, if you're a, if you're a mom, a dad, if you're an aunt and uncle, listen. We got to teach our kids a truth about David's life. And that is he knew God. He knew him. If our kids chase after, if they just add God to the list of the stuff that they're already chasing, if you think that our country's in trouble now, we're going to be in even more trouble. Because if we teach our kids that, yeah, you can just run after God the way you run after everything else, you will never know. They will never know the depth and the reality of God's goodness. And that ought to put a holy fear in all of us. Because did you see that song that we sang early? How did it describe God's name? We will worship your what name? Holy name. There is something about even God's name that is a cut above the rest. He's so holy. He's so good that to miss out on him, to miss out on that, to give our worship to anything other than a holy God is to miss out on knowing God. And that would be a travesty. We don't do uh, Don't forfeit the reality of knowing God for knowing about God. Don't forfeit the reality of your future and your kid's future for something other than the reality of knowing God because he's so good. Why did David want this above everything else? It's because he knew God. And knowing God was better than anything else he could possibly ever have. It's why he wanted it the most. It wasn't even, it wasn't even like there was, second place wasn't even close. It wasn't even on the radar. He's like, this is what I want the most. Yeah, I'm going to screw up every once in a while, but I'm going to come back to. Yeah, we're going to screw up every once in a while, but we come back to. And now, here's what I want to do is I want to help us. I want to help us avoid screwing up. And I, I want to give us a key into wanting that. And this is what David did. If you want to know God like David did, and we can, it starts with this one thing, and it's so simple, and yet it can be so hard to do unless you know him. Here it is. It's valuing our relationship with God above all else. If we want to know God like David knew God, if we want to experience God like David experienced God, then we have to do something that David did. And David valued his relationship with God above all else. It wasn't even close. Nothing else was on the radar. He valued his relationship. When you look at your relationship with God, do you value anything as much as or more than, or is he in a league of his own? You see, to really know God, to experience God like David did, we have to value our relationship with him above all else. And there are some simple things that we can do to do that. There's a couple steps we can take to do that. The first step in valuing God above all else is acknowledging the supremacy of God. Whether you choose to acknowledge that or not, God reigns supreme. God is supreme. He doesn't need me to say that, to know that. But if we're going to experience God, if we're going to know God, if we're going to have this love of God like David had, it starts with acknowledging that he is supreme. 
And the second step is acknowledging that we are supremely dependent on him and for him in our lives. God, you're supreme, I'm not. I am desperate for you, not just tomorrow, but today. Not just an hour from now, but now. That's what it means to value God above all else. His supremacy, our dependence on him. Another step that we can take is just creating space to spend time with him. Create space to listen and hear from him. Matthew, I'm going to ask you, do you have that slide that we had from last night from Batterson? I found this slide, man. It was so cool. Uh, no, not that one. I think it was the other one. Something about active listening. He's like, no, I don't have it. Okay. I found it. It's not mine. It's awesome. I put it up on my social media feed. And what it was is it was just about how listening isn't being still. It's an active pursuit of God. Creating space to hear from a holy God who loves you. That's how you value. And when you hear from him, when you hear him whisper into your life, I'm telling you, it's going to change what you want the most because you're getting him. He's speaking truth. He's speaking love into your life. And it's absolutely fantastic. But you will never know the reality of that if all you ever know is that he can do that. But when you know that he can do that and you experience that in your life by simply creating space saying, God, I want to hear from you today. And knowing that that whisper, what you heard, is consistent throughout all of scripture and it is good and it is righteous. And to know that God loves you enough to whisper into your life, that would change everything. In fact, that would change what you value the most. You'd be like, there is nothing on earth that compared, could compare to that simply by creating space. You see, God wants us to know him. So much so that he sacrificed his son Jesus for our sins so that what? So that we could know him. And knowing God is better, it's more rewarding, it's more satisfying than anything we could possibly ever experience. You want to know that God like David knew God? Do you want to understand the reality of why David would want living in the house of the Lord forever? It starts with valuing your relationship with God above all else. I've told you why David wanted that. But let me share with you just real briefly why this is actually in the Bible. Let me show you why David penned this. Besides the obvious, that God inspired it and God wanted him to, be, wanted him to do this. It's because that's what we're created for. We're created to know God. David knew something. David knew something about God, which is why he wanted this the most. And here's what he knew. He knew that the best place to be for all of eternity is in the presence of God. Like David knew what God knew. David knew like why God created us. I mean, you go back to the garden, we were with God. Like God designed us and created us to be with him. Why is David saying this? Because he is echoing something that God wanted from the very beginning to know how good it is to be in his presence. He's like, there's nothing else like it. I want you to know the purpose for which you were made. Why, is, why does David want this? Because he knows that there is no better place in all all of eternity to be than to be where God is. And when you experience God where you are, it changes what you want the most because if you have ever been in a place where you were desperate from God and you didn't feel like he was there, that was horrifying. But if you knew that God was there, that would change what you wanted the most. David his pursuit of God, how he was able to engage with God and actually be in the physical presence of God is different than it is for us. You see, in David's day, uh, the presence of God, the Ark of the Covenant, was a physical representation of God's presence among his people. In the spirit of God, God chose to make his manifesta manifestation, his presence among his people was in a tabernacle. It was like this tent that was designed for worship. So if you wanted to be as humanly close to God as possible in David's day, you would go to that place and you would offer your sacrifices. Why? Because that's where God's presence was. 
And there's this psalmist who pens so beautifully the expression of what David wanted. And he, he pens it in Psalm 84.10. You can write it down. David knew the reality of this. It says, better is one day in your courts than what? Than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your presence, God, than anywhere else I could possibly be. God, it is better to be with you to experience your love, your joy, your presence, your peace, and have that permeate, permeate my life than to be doing anything else. And the reality that David knew then still applies to us because here's what I'm going to tell you. Better is one day in the presence of God Better is one minute in the presence of God than anywhere else we could possibly be doing anything else. It's a true statement for us still today is being in the presence of God. So David would have to go to this tabernacle. And so what I'm trying to get at here is the best that David could ever hope for as far as being physically close to the presence of God is by going to a structure, by going to a tabernacle. David experienced God among us. But I want to show you a beautiful thing because God always does something bigger and he always does something better. And this is it. Because of where we live in history, God has chosen to make his dwelling somewhere else. Because of Jesus Christ, who came and died on the cross for our sins and rose from the dead so that we could have life, where does the Spirit of God choose to make his dwelling among us now? in us. David experienced God among us and God with him. We get to experience something even more amazing. God in us. You know what that tells us? There is no place that you can go that God isn't with you. There is no conversation. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, there is no place on earth that you can go that God isn't with you. And that should change what we want the most because, man, even though God's presence is with us, that doesn't keep us from some hardships in life, does it? No, but to know that God with us changes everything. So if I'm prone to worry, if I've got a conversation coming up that's going to make me worry, if there's an event in my life that's making me worry, I can always go back to this. I can always rest in this. Wait a minute, God's with me. What do I want the most? God, I want you the most. I need you the most. Where are you? You're with me. In those moments we get anxious, God with us. Those moments that are so good that we love to replay over and over and over in our mind. God with us. Now it's probably because of my brokenness. It's probably because I know the depth of my brokenness. But I also get to celebrate the goodness of God. But this is why I say this. I wonder if heaven doesn't look down sometimes and say, dude, you're totally missing it. You know all about me. But you're totally missing the fact that I'm in you, that I'm with you. And you're missing out on the reality of knowing me. Why did God, why did David want God the most? Because he knew that there was nothing better than to be in the presence of God. And this is what absolutely blows my mind. And it may be because my mind is more like a squirrel cage. If there isn't a day that we have to go and not experience God, we get to experience him now, but we get to experience him for eternity. And here's the mind-blowing part. Is did you know that even as you draw breath right now, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, the son of the most high God, the carpenter, is preparing and fashioning a place for you to be where God is in preparation for your arrival. Jesus even says so. I think it's in the book of John. I think it's over here. I want to say this. Yep, there it is. John 14, 1 through 3. Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be what? 
with me. Because you see, God knows and David knows that there is no better place to be for all of eternity than the presence of God. And even now, Jesus is handcrafting. He is doing the work. I mean, I know there's some awesome, I know that there's some awesome contractors in here. And I have seen way too much HGTV in my lifetime. I know there's some really cool pads out there, some cool places, but none of it, I mean none of it, I mean none of it will compare to what Christ is preparing preparing for you. So not only do we get to experience the presence of God forever because of Jesus Christ, but we get to do so from a place filled with heavenly treasures, not earthly trinkets. That's how good God is. That's how much God loves you. And that is why David wanted God the most. Because to be where God is is why he was made. It was why he was created. He just knew it was really good. Isn't God good? All right, so I'm going to wrap this up with a final thought. And I would tell you that it's not the thought that I want, but it's the only one I got. I know God can use it. When you want God the most, you get all of God. You get all of what he has. You get to experience God's best in this life and in the life to come, which is him. Why did David want to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life? Because he knew how good God is. And he's like, there's nothing else that compares. This is what I want. Why did David want to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life? Because he knew that as long as life endured, there is no better place in all of eternity to be than to be in the presence of God. The series, as I bring this morning to a close, I'm going to start with where I began. What is it that you want the most? Because for the life of me, I can't figure out what Mike Fackler would want more than God. And to be in his presence. And to know him. And to experience him. And I can't imagine that there's anything else that we would want more than that. Because there's nothing bigger, better, more rewarding, more eternal than God himself. The Life of David has been a fun series. And I want to say thanks to each and every one of you who have joined us week in and week out. And just bringing this thing to a close, I thought the best way we could celebrate God, the best way we could celebrate David's life is to land on this principle that isn't so much about David. It's about God and his goodness. Where did David want to dwell? In the house of the Lord forever. Doesn't that reflect the goodness of God? I pray that our lives would reflect the same. And as we move on from this series, you need to know that it's really just the beginning. Because from the line of David comes the greatest gift the world has ever known. His name is Jesus Christ. And we will be celebrating him in a celebratory way, man, because Christmas is here. It's Advent season. It is the anticipation of Jesus Christ coming to earth. Why? So that sinners like you and me could be redeemed and dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of our life. we got some fun things coming for you in the new year, but it all starts right here with Jesus. Lord God. Thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for your faithfulness to us. We love you, Father. I pray that we would be faithful today in our pursuit of you. I pray that we would value you above all else. I pray we would experience you. Help us be obedient in the work that you've called us to do. Thank you for your son, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.